Hey everyone, how's it going? Sam here. In this video, I want to talk about my Summer of Code uh, first little project, uh, which boils down to a to-do app, but there are a few other moving paths to it. I'm gonna be using uh, Lemon Squeezy to manage a license key activation. I'm gonna be using Electron and React uh, and Superbase for the storage and authentication. And eventually I'll be using Plausible as well in my projects, Plausible Analytics. This first little project was just to allow me to get used to using these uh, products rather than building a massive uh, app to learn React or something. Um, and so the flow would be buy a key from uh, my fake store on Lemon Squeezy. Then you would open up the Electron app, uh, activate the key, sign in um, into Superbase, and then you'd get access to the to-do app and all of that data from the to-do app would uh, get saved into Superbase as well. Um, so it's uh, exciting for me because I'm using different parts, uh, lots of different APIs and I'm excited to actually learn them, have these as foundations and maybe use them later on, um, use this project as a little bit of uh, boilerplate code uh, as well. So yeah, I'm excited to kick things off and uh, let's see how it goes. So starting off, I use the Vite uh, Electron app command, and then I had to manually put Tailwind CSS inside it. Uh, there was even a GitHub error or GitHub issue talking about how to uh, add it, and I managed to figure it out, so I replied to that. Um, and then I was just creating basic React uh, to do app with uh, Tailwind and um, Daisy UI components to help speed it up a lot and added a um, dark and light mode and a cyberpunk mode as well as a little bonus. Part two, adding Superbase. So major part of the puzzle was getting Superbase authentication up and running as well as saving the to-dos to Superbase. And this turned out to be a major pain in the ass because I didn't really know where to integrate it into the app. And I started integrating Superbase authentication inside the preload script of Electron. And this turned out to be a pretty bad idea. So then I moved on to integrating it into the IPC handlers. And that worked a bit better. But I think the problem was that every time I reloaded the app, I was signed out and that was starting to get annoying. So after about a week of tinkering, I thought to myself, well, I'm using a React app, so why don't I just follow a React tutorial? I did that and it became a lot easier. I implemented it the same way you do as React and used a provider and stored the session in the local storage. And yeah, just check if it's still valid when you launch the app, but just store it in the local storage. And um, that went a lot better as it's a provider, my uh, routes, in the app can actually check if the user is present or not. And so if there's a user object from the Superbase provider, uh, that means you're logged in. Otherwise, if there isn't a user, you're logged out. So this is the result. It's pretty obvious um, login screen, but it's working with Superbase. And then we've got the uh, task lists and then it can relaunch the Electron app. And I'll still be logged in. So I don't need to plug in again and it loads up. So for that, I have a auth provider that wraps all of my roots. And then inside that, I grab the session and user, store that in some state. Uh, I also store the session in local storage. And yeah, once the provider uh, boots up, I run a subscription for Superbase, grab the session. If it's there, I store it, otherwise you're not logged in. And then I just wrap some of the usual methods uh, that Superbase provides, sign up, log in, stuff like that. But having it in a provider and providing the user object is useful because uh, in other places of my app, I can check if the user uh, object is there. And if it's not null, that means I'm logged in, otherwise uh, I'm not logged in, so I'd have to do something about that, reroute to the login page perhaps. Um, but this is super useful because it's just easy to grab like the user ID or email uh, for use later on. 
Um, so yeah, that's how the login is working. So after authentication, I looked into starting storing the actual to-dos inside Superbase as well, um, just using the Superbase database, uh, not using Superbase storage. Um, yeah, I wrote the tables myself uh, with a bit of help from the uh, the AI Superbase has now that allows you to write queries using AI, um, and there to do uh, boilerplate code as well. Um, but got there in the end. Um, because I want to get better at writing uh, Postgres queries myself, so I tried to do it all myself um, for the most part. And then after that was written, it was integrating it into the app and accessing it via the app. Uh, and that wasn't too difficult either. Um, mostly just using CSS and formatting to get it right. But this is the result. So once you log in, I can grab the email of the user um, select tasks, delete them, modify them, uh, stuff like that. So let's just add one. There we go. Go ahead and modify it, add some numbers, uh, then log out. I've got my test here and I can check and uncheck that again, delete it. So we're working nicely with uh, Superbase. Part three, paywall. So one of the main features I wanted to implement was a license key system for my Electron app. And I found out about Lemon Squeezy on Twitter and how easy it was to uh, manage license keys for products and stuff like that. So I started using that. So uh, first of all, it was pretty fun just setting up the uh, product storefront, uh, doing a few pitches, stuff like that, just setting up the uh, Lemon Squeezy storefront. Um, that's where the people go to uh, buy the keys. And then after that, it was down to implementing it and implementing the sort of uh, feature blocking gateway uh, to the app with license keys. Um, and that wasn't too hard. Uh, I did make a big mistake though, was that I um, was storing the result of the uh, license keys in the local storage. So if it was a valid key, I'd store it in local storage. Um, and that was fine until you restart the app or restart the app after a while and the local storage is deleted. So then you have to enter the uh, product key again. And obviously you enter it again, it's already uh, been validated. So you can't actually use the app and it would, log it would block you out of the app. Um, so I found that out a bit later on, uh, unfortunately. Um, so then I decided, to, well, I, ha I had to change the way it was working. So uh, I kept it as a provider, but I used um, something Electron Supplies, which is called Set Session. And that allows you to um, write information to a file, basically. And it'll persist um, if the app's turned off or not, um, it'll persist. So in the app, I've got the license key provider. So this is um, providing basic methods to interact with the license key to uh, activate it and stuff like that. Um, so the first one is just to check if it's actually uh, activated. And so I grab the license key and send it to the Lemon Squeezy uh, API and get the response. If it's valid, uh, that's good. Otherwise, that's been bad. And um, I can also check if it's been deactivated or not and do stuff depending on that. Um, but the way I had to sort of store it uh, more durably is to use, as I said, Electron Store. Um, and so for that, I had to use IPC messaging uh, so this couldn't be done on the front end. This has to be on the back end. Um, so I just have a, a set license key and a get license key. So on boot, I do a get license key. If it's not in the store, then the person hasn't activated their license key. So I show the license key entry. Uh, otherwise, uh, that means it's set and it's valid. So that's okay. And then you're yeah, just setting the license key which is called from the front end. Uh, once Lemon Squeezy has validated it, you can store it into the uh, Electron store. 
And so in the provider, so this is what the sort of input uh, field uh, uses. It, uh, where is it? Da -da -da -da. Handle activate license. So I just send it the string and then uh, send it to the lemon squeezy uh, API, get the response. If it's an error, uh, license key is bad, return error, front end will manage that. If it's activated, that's great. Uh, catch the errors, blah, blah, blah. And also, so once this component mounts, I check if it's activated. Uh, so if it's in the storage, uh, if it's in the electron storage here, um, well, if it's not, that means uh, there's an error, so they'd have to enter it. Uh, but if I do get it, I check it again with Lemon Squeezy so that when the app launches, um, it'll check it. And yeah, if there's uh, an error or if it's inactive, I show the uh, license key field and otherwise I just launch the app. So here I've got a license key, I can paste it in, activate the license. Uh, because I'm logged in, it goes straight to here, but um, it should go to the login page. But if I log out, I'm back here. I'm not on the license key entry. Um, and so if I close the app, relaunch it, I'm back to the login screen uh, rather than the activate screen. Um, so that's great. And I can even um, if I log out, if I log back in, I can uh, use the app and I can actually deactivate the license. And because I'm checking when the provider mounts, if it's uh, valid or not. So it's still saved into the session, but I'm going to check it. The API returns that there's an error. So I have to activate it again. Uh, so that's working nicely. So as soon as um, the person relaunches the app and I've, if I've deactivated it and they relaunch it, they'd have to not uh, enter the access, uh, enter the license key again. Uh, so that's working pretty well. So I'm happy with that. So that's it for my little summer build. I'm happy with the way it turned out and using these different tools and APIs, it was uh, pretty interesting and I'm looking forward to using them in the future. Um, I think Lemon Squeezy, I'll make some tutorials on it because I think it's super useful and help get the word out there about it because I don't think it's um, talked about much. But it's a really useful tool if you want to start setting uh, software. So yeah, I'm going to do that. But if you made it to the end, cheers. Uh, if you like this sort of content, let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.